Eddie Hearn. The manifestation have begun. Deontay Wilder blames Dillian White, WBC number one ranked heavyweight. And he blames him for not getting a fight. What up, Fight World? It's your boy, Ego. And I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button. Also, subscribe. If you're new, consider subscribing. You dig. We working. And Wilder, he did a recent interview. Deontay Wilder, exclusive with WorldBoxingNews.net. Link in the description. Says Deontay Wilder faults Dillian White on WBC shot. He had four strikes. And he has an exclusive world boxing council heavyweight champion deontay wilder has opened up exclusively to wbn on a potential fight with dillian white wilder has lined up his next two fights despite white and his promoter eddie hearns bemoaning the fact that the britain has been mandatory with the wbc for over 600 days yada 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 recently completing a WBA stipulation against Dominic Brazil in devastating fashion. Wilder has a voluntary period. The American is using that time to take on former opponent Luis King Kong Ortiz this fall. Following the Ortiz rematch, Wilder has then set up a second outing with Tyson Fury, a fight with the WBC has given his blessing to. So since the initial battle in December, this means Dillian White will be forced to wait until the summer 2020 at least for a crack at the green and gold belt. Wilder believes the long delay is firmly the silver title holder's fault. White has been offered numerous chances by Deontay Wilder and his team since becoming number one as the Bronze Bomber has moved to explain in explicit detail. This is what Wilder said. <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, Dillian White, he couldn't have, he could have been given the opportunity. Deontay Wilder told WBM, I told Dillian White, I gave him two options. He says, I told him to sign with the PBC Al Heyman's Premier Boxing Champs when he came over here network shopping or whatever he was over here doing. So I told him, yeah, just sign with us. A one fight deal, <laughs> then no problem. We'll get that fight on. Right? Wilder continues by saying, we can get it on. I'll give you that shot. But that was one time. Shh. Strike. Then I told him to fight Luis King Kong Ortiz. You fight him and you got my word. You got me. I said, and everybody knows when I speak, that's my word. That's my bond and I don't go back on it. That's why when I say things, I own up to all responsibility because I mean what I say. I mean it. And I told you, you got it if you beat Luis King Kong Ortiz. What did he do? He didn't want to fight him. <laughs> Strike two. Then the WBC came and ordered him to fight Luis Ortiz. They ordered him to, and he didn't fight the fight. He didn't fight Luis Ortiz. That's strike three. Gaining considerable support for his cause in the UK, White and Hearn have been applying pressure to WBC President Mauricio Suleiman, a scheduled class with Oscar Rivas, Approaching July 20th, something Hearn wants the WBC to make an official eliminator. Even if that's ratified, the WBC would almost certainly sanction the Fury rematch due to the policy of making the best fight for the fans. Strike foe. <laughs> Adding further swing and miss to the discussion of Dillian White, Wilder is adamant that the body snatcher has nobody else to blame but himself. To this day! Sorry. He says, and I quote, I don't want people to feel sorry for him. I really don't. I know I came out and said it's a shame what's going on. But it's a shame what's been going on because of his own actions pointed out the undefeated puncher. I want to clear that up. It's because of his own actions. He allowed himself not to have this opportunity because he had three times, really four. But I'm not going to bring up the situation of when I was going back to the Joshua because that's where I told Eddie Hearn to put him on before the fight. Oh, that's another. Damn. Okay. I said, if you give me Dillian White, then put Joshua on the contract straight after for the next fight. So that's a solid strike four right there, he concluded. 
you know, shout out to Deontay Wilder. He's been conducting his interviews like a true champion. You know, he represents America. He represents my people. He represents the culture. I like it. I like everything Wilder's doing. You know, he's nobody wants to fight this Luis Ortiz. And there's I don't want to hear shit. Nobody wants to fight Luis Ortiz with a name, with something to lose, but Dillian, I mean, excuse me, but Deontay, the bronze bomber Wilder. So it's a good fight. I'm going to support it. I'll be there. I was at, you know, Wilder Fury. You, you guys know how it goes down. But it's funny. I told you new media. Y'all see it. Old media is drowning. They are drowning. Like they, they don't know what to do. You notice how Deontay, the bronze bomber Wilder, he is saying exactly what I've been telling you. I said the same thing, and I even added on some more stuff. He's just talking about the WBC side. What about the, the IBF Kubrat Pulev fight that Eddie Hearns and Dillian White pulled out of the mandatory eliminator? So that's two on record mandatory final eliminators to get a title shot, not necessarily... Not necessarily just with Wilder, but with Joshua, who was then champion. You know, now Andy Ruiz. Dillian White would have been in position to be a man, an actual mandatory. And the funny thing, but wait, there's more. The funny thing about this article, Eddie Hearn is constantly caught up in inconsistencies with what he puts out. He said that Dillian White versus Oscar Rivas, which is a solid fight. He says it was the WBC final eliminator or some shit. Now in this article, in the recent things that we are hearing and seeing and reading, he's saying that they're requesting that the WBC make this White Rivas fight a mandatory. But he made it sound like it was a foregone conclusion. Like, yo, Dillian White is fighting old boy Oscar Rivas, who beat Brian Jennings, right? And it's for the number one spot. You know, it's a, an eliminator. But in actuality, that hasn't been ruled and or publicized. That hasn't been, you know, the WBC has to decide. But I've already told you, just like Deontay Wilder is telling you, Dillian White, he would have been in the, in the, in a position of power as much as he could like uh, first of all you don't as a challenger you don't have the position of power over a more popular champion so he was not going to be more you know not have more come into it as a challenger with a stoppage loss than an undefeated you know knockout artist who's the longest reigning heavyweight champion or even aj when he had the belts you, you weren't going to be the a side but you would have given yourself the strongest opportunity and positioning that you possibly could as a challenger and you would have something in stone where if you had completed these final eliminators, either the WBC one or the IBF one or both or whatever, and you would have been the guy who was not only ranked because you listen with Eddie Hearn, <laughs> Eddie, Hearn <laughs> Eddie Hearn and Dillian White, they keep trying to, it's like, it's like a soap opera. They keep pandering to the audience and the casuals and the UK fans and shit for sympathy, but all that crying, all the sympathy, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't give you access to this belt. You know, you're not going to get the title shot just because UK fans or, you know, people in the IFL comment section like what you're saying and or agree with that. That don't get your fighter to fight. So what are we talking about? You know, and the the bottom line is Dillian White could have definitely and should have definitely strengthen his bargaining power and his negotiating power by completing somebody's final eliminator this is all publicized i broke it down i showed you show receipts and another thing even though wilder sounds just like new media he sounds just like me with what he's saying to this world boxing news another thing that he left out that he didn't mention that i've mentioned new media digital model y'all know what it is is on top of all this you should have fought Luis Ortiz. WBC told you to fight Luis Ortiz. Wilder told you to fight Luis Ortiz. Wilder says sign the PBC and you have my word. Word is born. You know what I'm saying? Despite all that, despite the IBF and the QBRAT pull it final eliminator because Dillian White, Eddie Hearn chose to make a box office pay-per-view fighting Joseph Parker coming off of a loss to milk the UK public. You know, despite all these things, let's put those to the side. 
the other issue outside of the Luis Ortiz and the final eliminators that um, Dillian White did not participate in. And, you know, despite that, he already beat Derek Chisora two years before. And then in last December, they rematched the guy he already beat in a tough fight two years later, you know, as opposed to fighting Luis Ortiz. So they've had ample opportunity to fight Luis Ortiz, which is a bigger and better fight, more meaningful, etc. Despite all of those things, they did some other things that I feel were wrong. You know, Eddie Hearn gave Gerald Big Baby Miller the opportunity at Joshua's belt. So if, if the UK and all the fans who are listening to Eddie Hearn and Dillian White complain, if they really sympathize and empathize with Dillian White, Wilder has one belt. These belts, Dillian White could have competed for all of these belts if he had fought Joshua again. And that's a domestic homegrown you know, rivalry that they already had. It was already a sellable fight. But guess what? Eddie Hearn was worried about his cash cow, Anthony Joshua, making him look good and stuff. So he gave the opportunity to Big Baby Miller because Eddie Hearn and Team Joshua and Rob McCracken and all of them, they liked Joshua's chances with Gerald Big Baby Miller more so than Dillian White. Gerald Miller, there was a lot of questions still about his level of competition. You know, he was fighting the guys in front of him and beating him, but he fought Gerald Washington coming off a loss. He fought a 40 year old Adamak. He fought Dog Band Dinu, no one's really heard of. He fought Johan Duhapis after Wilder had knocked him out. He fought um, Povetkin and knocked out Johan Duhapis too. So he hadn't fought no one like a Joshua. We already know Dillian White comes to fight because we've seen him against former champions, Lucas Brown, you know, former champions like Joseph Parker. You know, he fought a veteran like Derek Chisora and then obviously the Joshua fight. So we know that he complicates things and, he's you know, he's coming to scrap against Joshua. So it don't matter what people say. If you really want a Dillian White, it's not like just Wilder. He has one belt. When Joshua had the belts, you know, that's all that they would remind you of is that Deontay Wilder only had one belt. So. Why is Dillian White, if you really and truly cared about the man's legacy and him getting the title shot and being deserving, then the in-house fight with the guy with four belts, including the IBO, why didn't he didn't fight him? Why are we just worried about Dillian White and, and, and Wilder, you know? So all that pandering to the crowd and stuff, the real fans know what's up. And Wilder, it's funny, he's just saying in this interview, he's literally saying everything that I've told you, the same exact things. You know, Dillian White, you know, he wants him and Eddie Hearn. They want people to feel sorry for him. But he's had ample opportunity to um, rectify the situation and get this shot. Now, the last point that I'm making that Wilder didn't really suggest, but it's a true fact. You see this picture. This is Wilder taking care of his actual WBC appointed and ordered mandatory Dominic Brazil. He knocked him out in one round. Your boy was there. I was there. And it was crazy in that Barclay Center. But Dominique Brazil knew he would been on the shelf. You know, he'd been waiting. He had personal disdain for De Deontay Wilder because of what happened in the hotel with Wilder and his brother and blah, blah, blah. You guys research the story if you don't know what's going on. Anyway, Brazil didn't like Wilder, vice versa. So he was the actual WBC mandatory. Dominique Brazil, this is what Wilder didn't cover. Dominique Brazil told Sky Sports, who works directly with Rematch Room, Eddie Hearn and Dillian White, you know, they've showcased his fight, Anthony Joshua, that whole, you know, faction. Dominique Brazil told Sky Sports, a UK based media sports company, told Sky, hey, he's the number one contender. I'm the number one mandatory. It's confusing. I will fight Dillian White, line him up, and then the winner gets Deontay Wilder. So even though this man has a personal vendetta and a personal bad blood because he got punched in front of his wife and kids and shit on some Damon Wayne shit, his wife and kids, you know, and he got punched, he was willing to risk it, risk it by fighting against uh, Dillian White. And this is all provable. He was willing to fight against Dillian White. He told Sky Sports that. And that would have solved this. And this person you see on the screen getting the mandatory shot. If Dillian White, instead of picking Joseph Parker or instead of picking 
um, Derek Chisora, had he listened to Dominic Brazil and took him up on his offer, then guess what? He would be the mandatory. Hold on, let me see if I can. I've already done this before. Look. Look how quick it. I already have all this shit saved, bro. New media. Make sure you guys, this is the real journalistic, giving the fans what they want, giving the fans what they need. I don't know why the internet is bugging right now. So look, Dillian White and Dominic Brazil ordered to fight by the WBC. So once again, if he actually fought Dominic Brazil, who was down to fight him, look, I don't know why. Dillian White and Dominic Brazil opened to heavyweight fights, right? White has flown out to attend Manny Pacquiao, Adrian Broner. This is what Wilder was talking about. This ain't even the article because they have an exclusive. They, they have an exclusive with uh, Dominic Brazil. Dominic Brazil will fight. See how easy it is with technology and new media and his digital mob. So the WBC actually ordered that too. So there was confusion. That's the whole point I'm making is this. There was confusion as to who who should get the number one spot that could have been rectified and this is this so really it's not even three four strikes it's literally five strikes or more dominic brazil open to white this guy i i'm trying to f figure out the chain of um keywords oh here it is see how easy this is Easy peasy. Sky Sports. Look, August 25th of last year, 2018, Dominic Brazil would welcome a fight with Dillian White. So Dominic Brazil. So this is before the Derek Chisora rematch that didn't need to take place on pay-per-view Sky Sports box office. Dominic Brazil told Sky Sports, who's been televising a lot of Dillian White's fights and works directly with Eddie Hearn. Dominique Brazil would welcome a fight against Dillian White. This is an exclusive interview. The Californian Brazil was installed as the mandatory challenger for Deontay Wilder's WBC title after a win over Eric Molina last November, much to the dismay of Dillian White, who is the number one contender. See, mandatory versus number one contender. So Sky Sports, whoever pinned this article, knows that brazil was in fact the actual mandatory so what is this 600 days nonsense that they keep talking about it they're talking about when he won the wbc silver but this sky sports article is letting you know that brazil was the mandatory it says the californian dillian white is not from california the californian was installed as the mandatory challenger for wilder after he beat eric molina much to the dismay of dillian white who is the number one contender. Once again, Dillian White, Eddie Hearn chose to go the money route, fight Joseph Parker, give unnecessary rematches like Derek Chisora, fight Parker off of a loss to Anthony Joshua. And they chose to do this instead of fighting final eliminators. They were never installed as the number one mandatory. And this article is showing this is from August 2018. But with Wilder expected to defend against Tyson Fury later this year, which he did, Brazil could be willing to risk a, a guaranteed title shot. Read this. Brazil could be willing to risk his guaranteed title shot, meaning if Wilder kept his belt with Fury, which he did because it was a draw, Brazil was willing to risk a guaranteed mandatory position to fight Dillian White, which is unnecessary because he already has the shot if Wilder kept winning. If there is a public demand for the showdown with White, quote. So it's a wrap. You know, I thought the Dillian White fight and myself was actually going to happen this year. Brazil told Sky Sports exclusively. 
He's bound with the situation with the WBC and his silver belt. And I have the WBC mandatory. Once again, confirming that Brazil has always been the heavyweight number one mandatory and Wilder just fought him. I only thought it was right for him and myself to get in the ring and square it off as the fans would love to see. So hopefully that fight does come here in the near future. So I, I keep, I'm going to keep going back to this. These are multiple avenues that Dillian White could have taken. He could have fought Luis Ortiz. He could have fought Dominic Brazil. He could have signed a PBC for a one-off fight. You know, he could have did all these things. He could have did an IBF uh, final eliminator. He didn't do anything. He just did Willie Beeman, created his own plays, him and Eddie Hearn, because Eddie Hearn's priority was Anthony Joshua, who at the time was undefeated and winning. You know, why didn't you fight Brazil? You didn't do... How could we feel sorry for Eddie Hearns in this uh, Dillian White in the 600 day waiting thing when we've known that Dillian White was not the number one mandatory, that he is not participated in final eliminators, that he squandered opportunities by not fighting Luis Ortiz. Wilder gave him his word. The WBC ordered him to do this. WBC ordered him to fight Brazil. They didn't do anything. Instead, what they did is gave us what rematch room gives us sometimes, which is a rematch. And they gave us a recycled fight with um, Derek Chisora to try to sell tickets and like, oh, domestic showdown because the first fight they were throwing tables and shit. Now tables turn because Joshua gets knocked out. Now Eddie Hearn is forced to look at some of his other players and put some emphasis into their career. But, you know, this could have all been avoided. And I can't feel no remorse or pity for Dillian White. Like him as a fighter, he's cool. But... He keeps saying 600 days. The 600 days doesn't make sense. You were never the mandatory. So you're just counting when you won the silver belt. And again, you didn't listen to the WBC. You didn't listen to Wilder. You didn't um, listen to the call out of Dominique Brazil, who was welcoming in the fight. You didn't listen to the IBF and their final eliminator. And then now you're upset about it. Now, the last thing I'll say is he already has a difficult fight on the books. So all this talk about this. Hopefully it ends until we see the Oscar Rivas fight, because to me, that's a dangerous fight. It's a tough fight, rugged fight. If Dillian White doesn't look exceptional in that, no one even cares about fighting, you know, Wilder versus Dillian White. You know, Dillian White, he's a good fighter, but he was hurt by Joseph Parker. Oscar Rivas hurt Brian Jennings in the first round. You know, that's a dangerous fight. So I think Dillian White and Eddie Hearn, instead of the Wilder talk and, you know, complaining about the situation that we all know, even this article is telling you that brazil you see life is not about if you like it or not but it says the californian was installed as the mandatory challenger for wilder's wbc title period so we're all on the same page that wilder just knocked out his mandatory this article dating back from august last year has in two places acknowledged the man you see on the screen urban dictionary dominic brazil was wilder's mandatory end of story so what are we talking about 600 days when did this count so they're obviously just going off of how long it's been since he beat robert hellenius for this wbc silver title but again that is not how boxing works you could be the number one contender they didn't you didn't fight the eliminator you were never the number one mandatory and again it's misinformation that eddie hearn and dillian white keep giving out they keep saying stuff like eddie hearn said at first the revis oscar revis dillian white fight he said that it was an actual eliminator but we haven't heard that from the wbc so you know all this talk let's just see how white looks versus revis and either way i don't see white getting the opportunity the wbc was willing to get out of the way for uh wilder fury 2 the rematch it's a big fight for boxing they have clauses protective clauses in their contract where they can postpone mandatories and string it out for the greater good of boxing and they were willing to get out of the way for wilder fury 2 to happen this year but tyson fury pulled this you know stunt where he signed with top rank and espn and now we have to wait a little bit longer so there's no way that the wbc especially with them making franchise titles for canelo and, and all this stuff there's no way that they're gonna uh not appease both top rank and Al Heyman's premier boxing champions in a Wilder Fury 2 fight and the fans because Tyson Fury, you know, he's a lineal champion. 
and he's from the same area, you know, UK. And the WBC, you think to to give Dillian White a shot, you think they're going to allow Dillian White to come between a bigger money fight and a fight that the fans want to see and need a conclusion on? So I agree with everything that Wilder's saying, much of what he's saying. Wilder is new media, you know what I'm saying? Because he, he's saying the same thing I'm telling you. Dillian White has had multiple opportunities to get a title shot in general, not just with Wilder's belt. And that's the other thing that a lot of people in the UK keep forgetting to point out. Wilder is one person with one belt. If why did they lowball Dillian White and couldn't get the fight over the line in this is an in-house fight and with the guy he already fought? But somehow Big Baby Miller, he's good enough and he's content. You know, sounds like Dillian White. He's been like, man, I've been selling these pay-per-views and having tough fights with Joseph Parker. You got to give me, you, you know, you got to pay like you weigh. And they didn't want to do it and they didn't want the risk because they were checking for Dillian White. They know what he's capable of. They know he hurt Joshua, you know, and all the while they did all this. And it was Andy Ruiz who actually beat Joshua. So who knows what would have happened if AJ would have went instead of after Big Baby Miller or before him, if he would have just fought Dillian White in a rematch, maybe he beats him again. But the guy, they were trying to cherry pick and they picked the wrong cherry because Andy Ruiz is a talented fighter and that style was all wrong for Joshua. So, you know, I can't really feel remorse for Eddie Hearn and Dillian White with this 600 day nonsense. New media we work in. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button. And you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing.